profile interview segment this week, I will be speaking with the national president of the National Union of Civil Engineering, Construction, Furniture and Woodworkers, Comrade Amechi Asuguni. He will be shedding light on the several challenges the infrastructural sector in Nigeria is faced with and the possible solutions. Join me. It's good to have you on the program. A lot is happening um, in the construction sector and um, your union just celebrated its 40th anniversary. Um, how would you say the construction, the engineering, the woodworkers, how would you say they fared over the past 40 years? Actually, the sector, as you can see, uh, represents uh, the true foundation for infrastructure for a given country. And uh, like the team of our summit stated, the role of infrastructure in the developing economy, in particular case study of Nigeria. Uh, construction Union has displayed its relevance over 40 years. And uh, the convention is all over that uh, it's a sector that can be used to measure infrastructure growth in Nigeria. As a people who believe in commitment, members of this union have contributed their quotas to various companies in the quest to achieving the required goal. The problem we have certainly is not the company, certainly also cannot be the workers. The problem is uh, the government that should set the infrastructural framework for the country. We're talking about infrastructural design. This has to be achieved before a contract is awarded. So when this is already rolled out to companies, companies engage members to do the job, actualize the project, and fine, we are good to go. But over the years, we have seen situations whereby projects are awarded, new government come and they, they pick up another project, leaving the dream of Nigeria almost half done all the time. It's a problem because a country does not change. What changes is the people that govern the country. So when we say new government, probably is a scenario that affects the vision of every administration. The new government we talk about, that we're talking about new people in government. Government remain constant because if we don't see it that way, the challenge of fluctuation in terms of infrastructure will continue. And the uh, average Nigeria will tell you in the next 10 years where we're we going to be. And that is why you see government in and out giving the same promise. Every time we tell you they will construct road, that same road will carry over to their second tenure, they will tell you they will construct the same road. And we're talking about developing country that has to be building on what you have built. So the question is, uh, these 40 years has exposed a lot of uh, inadequacy in terms of uh, infrastructural growth in Nigeria. And uh, I thank God that construction provided a platform that discussed infrastructural growth in Nigeria. That has exposed a lot of hidden virtue to government. And as a matter of uh, decision, the National Security Council have directed that this union should summarize the outcome of that summit and present it to Mr. President. Because if somebody must not do something, there are people that are willing to do it free of charge. And construction has offered itself to play that role. We are going to summarize the discussion of that summit, including the recommendations made on the way forward for Nigeria infrastructure. And uh, by the grace of God, between now and uh, uh, October, we will ensure that that letter gets to Mr. President through the concerning ministries. Looking at the issue of abandoned road, projects in Nigeria. It's something that kept coming up during the conference held recently in Abuja. Um, with what you've heard, with what the speakers and the keynote um, lecturer has actually said, would you say that your union has a roadmap set, like an agenda for the government to ensure that um, the number of abandoned projects that we have, road projects we have in Nigeria is probably reduced or probably completed in good time. Yes, I think uh, what I have uh, discovered of recent is uh, when somebody has no detailed knowledge of something, he may not also have 
the sacrificial time and attention to such. And that has informed me to believe that the overtime abandonment we have suffered in terms of project-wise is as a result of loss of connection, believing that projects are not tied to individuals. Projects are for the country. Projects are for the state. Projects are for the people. Infrastructure are part of the facilities that distribute the dividend of democracy to the people. Infrastructure is the evidence of governance. So the abandonment of project now is as a result of lack of priorities by governance. When they place priority on project, every government has a plan for a particular project. There is always a purpose for a particular road. Otherwise, it becomes economic waste. So when a project is awarded to achieve a particular objective, irrespective of the government that awarded that project, is seen to be government priority. And therefore, when another government should come on board, is to take after the irrespective of the party. See, country Nigeria is not known to be any political party. Political parties, these are political institutions put in place to gain power. But the government of this country is of democracy, it's for the people. How do you govern that the people will enjoy basic facilities such as road, medical, name them, transportation, a good transport system, reliable one, is capable of saving Nigeria even from the challenge of agriculture that we're talking about. How would the rural, how would the rural area get access to the urban market if there's no road? So you need to know why you are connecting the urban to the rural areas. You need to know that the influx of people to the urban will certainly increase rentage fee. And as such, housing provision is necessary. But when you don't have this within your memory or your program, you will just be awarding projects for awarding sake. That is why you see this is a country where they award airport to a particular uh, region and they award another airport to another region just to distribute airport to where it has no economic basis. So for me, uh, abundant project, as part of our recommendation to government, is that they should place priority on project, irrespective of who has awarded that project, to ensure that project A has to finish for B to connect to it. If you abandon project A to start another project, you are just simply beginning a new project. And that is a big loss. It's a big waste, and uh, we must kick against it. We've all been encouraged to be whistleblowers. I would like to ask you, um, has there been any time the union actually um, raised eyebrow or probably informed the public or probably reminds the government of some of the projects that um, they've abandoned? Yes, I think uh, one of the factors we have uh, recently, even through the speaker of uh, that summit, is to be told that the cost of our project is uh, unnecessarily high as a result of probably lack of uh, proper evaluation before projects are awarded. In terms of a uh, whistleblower where it exists, for me, we don't have such cases because it's only when you have actually paid for the project that one will be guided to know whether... But there is this trend that we know of, of a project being completed on paper, but at the end of the day, in reality, it's not. So is there, is there anything the union is hoping to probably do in some few years to come or some few months in terms of engaging the government properly? Because we know that if there are projects to be done, we know that your workers, the companies will be more engaged and it will definitely probably create more wealth for the workers and also increase the number of jobs that mm -hmm. we have. So what's, what's your take on this? Yeah, I think uh, for now, I will say nothing of such at my disposal, but I must tell you that the union is resolute in terms of monitoring. We've done it before, including fight against casualization. Ordinarily, it's not the duty of trade union. But I will tell you that this administration, for the past five years, we have converted over 10,000 casuals to permanent staff. We are doing that because, as a matter of fact, we wrote to the Minister of Labor to tell him that this is our struggle, even though we know we need a federal government to have done this, but all we need is support so that nobody says, why? Because what we are doing is to protect the citizens of this country. 
and we have done that successfully. And uh, regarding uh, where abnormal payments are made to complete, to have completed the project where it does not exist, the union will not fail to look into that because that will also amount to illegality. You know, more or less like uh, when people practice ghost employment in the state and then they keep complaining of a bogus salary budget. Whereas, you, don't, you can't see the people. The figure exists, but nobody. And I think uh, where you have people presenting document for job not completed as though it has been completed, you still need government to be upright in that area because a contractor cannot summon that courage if nobody's beating that drum from the government side. So would you say that the uh, Ministry of Labor is doing its job in terms of um, supervising or ensuring that um, employers of labor in your sector comply when it comes to the standard practice of how the construction sector should be? Over time, we have actually raised issues with regard to inadequacy in terms of uh, monitoring capacity from the Ministry of Labor. Uh, but uh, with the recent discussion we had with the minister, he has also assured us, including promises that uh, where it exists, beyond the monitoring units coming there that uh, even myself can put a call to him to report such cases and uh, he will do everything possible to arrest the situation. But beyond that, we want a self-effective system whereby the companies already we know that uh, illegality is not pardoned in Nigeria. And uh, when you have such time, because I know very well that the monitoring unit over time has not performed effectively I may not know their reason, but I know very well that most of the companies uh, are falling short because of the inadequacy we suffer from the monitoring side. Where, where you have government carry out their functions effectively in terms of forcing companies to comply with the rules in the working place, safety, and other measures that will produce decent work. I think it will go a long way to promote health and safety in the workplace. And above all, pro increase productivity in the workplace. Because even the case of uh, wage itself is a measure to productivity where it occurs. But I want to believe that uh, we will still use this medium to call on federal government to energize its uh, institutions that are responsible in monitoring anti labor practices across infrastructure, across construction companies, to ensure that they do it diligently. So that no company hide under this uh, shortfall to take advantage of Nigerians. The union adopted um, the slogan, Building the Nation, at its um, 40th um, anniversary. Um, can you share with us why this was adopted? Yes, the choice for the adoption of the motto, Building the Nation, by the National Union of Civil Engineering Consortium Furniture and Woodworkers. This came as a result of you first and foremost, you need to know what, who you are, your relevance and your significance to a country. And we have discovered that you can't build Nigeria without infrastructure. And infrastructure cannot exist without construction. And as such, we need to encourage our people. We are the one building, irrespective of the challenges of the economy. We must keep to our tent that we are the builders of this nation and Call it any, any way or any name. Uh, so long infrastructure is consigned, construction remains the pioneers of establishing it. We remain the only channel to bringing it to bed. So for us, we are the builders of this nation and we will continue to build. That name, that name building the nation is to encourage our members to continue to remain resolute and uh, put in their best. As the name sounds, so our value sound, And uh, there is no contest to that. We are indeed building the nation. Talking about expatriate quota, in your sector, would you say that um, employers of labor are actually adhering to the standard according to law in Nigeria? Yes, here we come again about this expatriate quota. This matter has uh, come and gone and uh, still coming because a country that has no consistent practice in terms of uh, defending his people. We always do an in and out approach. Uh, don't forget we have uh, the, the art 
that is actually providing for indigenous to have upper hand in some sector or sections of work in terms of our sector. Unfortunately, some expatriates in court has taken advantage of lapses, both from immigration and uh, other borders, to, to just enter in the name of expatriate and then see, do the job of Nigerians. So in one way or the other, they are also shortchanging Nigerians in terms of employment opportunities. And uh, the expatriate quota, we may not be able to ascertain it because uh, don't forget, it's the duty of government to monitor and ensure that uh, no employer breach the content law. Yeah, so the, 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 the monitoring of it has to be their duty. And I remember there's always a committee that supervises this practice and they visit companies to ensure that they comply with the local content law. So that law exists, but the question is how effective is the enforcement. So for us, from what we are seeing in some Chinese companies and other European companies in the sector, they bring in some white, not necessarily the expert nature of their job, but just because they saw the opportunity to key in. So for us, they should continue to resist those uh, employees from the company side that are not necessarily expert that has come to dominate and take the job of Nigerians. It's unacceptable because we can't do it to them. We can't, we can't, they don't suffer that against us in their country, but we suffer it here against our people. So for me, we we'll continue to advocate that government live up to expectation in ensuring that uh, employment are measured according to their quotas. Job made for Nigerians should be done by Nigerians. And uh, where you have few jobs that require expatriate, even those jobs that require expat need, requires a Nigerian to partner with that expat such that in a short run or a longer run, depending on the nature of the job, a Nigerian should have full idea of that job. But in this case, expatriate work for one year, 10 years, and is still doing the same job. Nigerians should monitor this, and it should be the duty of all. So talking about um, the indices, would you say that uh, with the indices of us spending twice the amount of money compared to other African countries to construct roads, do you think that um, we are ready for infrastructural growth? Yes, I express my fear because when we have a proof that says the cost of constructing a kilometer road in Nigeria is a double of what is spent outside the nation, irrespective of the soil nature of the country. Uh, because average uh, road in this country, you can consider the north, where at least you can't complain much of swamp. So, but if you take, an, if you take a sample from the north and then uh, you discover that the kilometer road is uh, worth twice what we are spending in Kenya or Ghana, then one is afraid because uh, it, it means that uh, from the origin, we are not getting it right. And that is where some people may suspect corruption. Because these costs are deliberate. Uh, whereby a, a, a road that is required to take 100 billion is taking double, and then uh, people will tell you they cannot pay salary, but they will do everything possible to see how they can dig out a certain percentage of that money. And then, uh, before you know, the contractor may not tell you everything. So we are worried that from the source, where the contract is awarded is the problem, not actually the contractor. It's not what the tender they get. And therefore, we just have to monitor the, uh, the financial books of this state to actually know what goes to the contractor and what's come back in return. Because if what is being awarded for infrastructure is put on infrastructure on a yearly basis, we can't be where we are. I'm very sure we can be, from the central to the unit of state, the money voted in through budget every year, we talk about the need of financial infrastructural linkage. And we are linking them abnormally. And again, the chances of getting what we want on a yearly basis is not there. Then uh, it, it calls for worry, because uh, it's a country that everybody wants to see growing. And uh, if the money is available, but the experts 
to bring this uh, money to practice in terms of building the nation is lost. Then uh, the children, the gener future generation, they have lost their dream. Okay, with all you said, it's obvious that uh, there's a lot of whistleblowing that we might have to be seeing from the Construction Workers Union. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you. God bless you. You're welcome. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching. And remember, labor creates wealth.